Now to demonstrate the rain meter program, you can notice that my desktop is completely empty except for the one hypercam icon. The reason being is that everything that was on the desktop was part of rain meter or a collection of rain meter scans that I used to display random information. The program for rain meter can be found at rainmeter.net slash cms slash and it is essentially a program that lets you customize nearly anything to the appearance. You can see the different download location here. I have it in the installers. And in addition to it, there is a program called SpeedFan, which is used to monitor voltages, fan speeds, and temperatures. Advantages of using SpeedFan to find your system's temperature, as opposed to the Everest Home Edition, is that Rain Meter can use SpeedFan to be able to display that same information on your desktop as a single line of text, or as in my case, two lines of text, one for the CPU and the other for the hard drive. To begin, the installation of Rain Meter 2.2 is relatively simple. There's no extra add-ons that they try to get you to install. You just have to pay good attention to where you want it to go. In my case, since I'm running a 32-bit version of Windows, it will automatically default to the 64-bit version, or it will block out the 64-bit version. And I will use the standard installation because I'm not trying to run this on, say, a USB drive to be carried around to different people's computers. I'm going to hit Next and Install. When I choose to run Rain Meter, it will load automatically with the default skin that it comes packaged with called Lustro. Here we can see the Illustro skin with a number of different options, very similar to the ones that I have. The ones that I had started off as these, I simply customized them to whatever appearance I preferred. And you can see here that they have almost the exact same functions. This will give me an RSS feed, so if I was to click on any one of these, it would open a web page with that particular article. The same thing applies here for the Google search bar. It will instead uh, redirect me to the Google web page with whatever I type in there to search. Now, I can click anywhere on these with the right-click command, and it will actually show me the Rain Meter main menu. If I go to Manage, now we can see the Illustro one, or we can see the one that I have. And the advantage of uh, Rain Meter is that you can save different themes. In this case, we have the Illustro default, which is in the background right now. Right now, I am going to load my original one. So here we can see a number of different things running in the background. A few to-do lists, one for each day of the week. Here we can see the daylight sunlight map of the planet Earth. If I click on this button, it will maximize it to the full screen. And I can see the approximate area of the Earth that's covered by shadow, and which is currently being exposed to sunlight. If I click on it again anywhere, it will return to a miniature up here. This is a time map of the world as far as each time zone is concerned. This is useful for when I have to coordinate with other people in different hemispheres. For now, I can just show or hide that. If I want to show it again, I can click on that clock. The same thing applies for these. If I want to show my to-do list, I just have to click on the command and it will be able to reveal itself like that. The calendar will actually update itself day to day. The current day of the week will be in bold and in white. Originally, this was a different color, and it had a solid black background. And up here, we can see a clock, a, both a digital one and an analog one that I made. Beneath the clock is a time of how long the computer has been up and running. In my case, the system uptime has been running for the last five days, seven hours, 58 minutes, and 48 seconds. Not necessarily a good thing, depending on the temperature. We can see here that the CPU and the hard drive temperatures are registered as zero. Uh, this is simply because the speed fan program is not running. Just to demonstrate that, I'll be uh, installing that later. Up here, we can see my current IP address. This is actually registered to an IP address of the uh, marketing agency whose business I work as a system administrator for. So this is the last web connection I was using to be able to perform any activity. Above it, you see the number of memory, the amount of memory in megabytes being used. So out of the 2 gigs possible of RAM that I have, almost uh, a third, less than a third of that is being used. Above that you can see the processing power, both as a number and as a moving colored bar to demonstrate the amount of processing power in 
use at any given moment. To the left you can see a battery that will be able to demonstrate the amount of battery life left on my laptop. If I were to unplug this from the terminal, it would be able to remove the plug and the percentage would steadily drain. To the left here you can see a slider bar that represents the amount of memory or free hard drive space that I have. The blue bar will represent the used space and the gray will represent the total. And you can see it is constantly being decreased in the one category and rising in the other category. This is because Hypercam is recording all of this at several hundred megabytes per second. And if I were to click on the disk drive up here, you would be able to uh, access the C drive as a shortcut. I prefer to just use the Windows C command that will be able to do the same thing. Now, to edit a rain meter skin, it's relatively simple. For instance, if I go to the to-do list and I choose to edit the skin, it refers to all of these as a skin. You can see that it's really no different than a text file, only instead of a TXT extension, it is saved as a .ini. And I would recommend going to RainMeter's site itself. It has a very good wiki program devoted to introductions and being able to do how-tos. The easiest thing to do would be to start with a skin that looks close to what you have in mind already and merely to edit it and tailor it to your own needs. Next I'll go to the speed fan setup. I can choose to agree. And I don't necessarily need a desktop shortcut because I already have it. The same is true of the program group. I will need the main program just to be able to run the program. I'm going to have it overwrite the existing installation. Now that it's completed, I can choose to close it. I can minimize this. And I'll begin it again by going to the shortcut that I have made for it over here. So now we can see the user interface for SpeedFan. And it will show me the hard drive temperature, the central processing unit's temperature, and also the motherboard temperature, which is roughly the same as the CPU temperature. And now that it is open and running, the data is being fed to Rain Meter, which will now display these here as two lines of text in Celsius. If I wanted to, I could demonstrate it in Fahrenheit, although because it is still getting the data from SpeedFan in Celsius measurements, it will only register Fahrenheit in 9 degree increments, so there's really no difference than using Celsius. You can see that I can configure it by what is displayed and how intelligent I want it to run. If I wanted to, I could give it control of the speed of the fans so that I could be able to have the computer constantly kept cool. I don't necessarily need to worry too much about that. As far as options go, I can choose to have it start minimized, but this can be a headache because it doesn't always work. And the static icon simply refers to the icon down here. Also, hovering the mouse over here and clicking on it will be able to show me that as a right-click menu. And if I left-click on it, double-clicking on it will bring me back to this. So, having this run in the background is perfectly fine because the information is being fed to rain meter, so I can just choose to minimize this. And it will hide itself from the tray down here and hide itself in the system tray off to the side. 